This is a story about a group of Yu-Gi-Oh players who try to do a nice thing for a homeless man, but end up getting taken advantage of. Trigger warning for mentions of domestic violence. Roll post. Okay, kind of a long one due to a lengthy but relevant backstory. So, about seven or eight years ago, there was a dude who used to come up to the Burger King we all hung out at, prior to us getting kicked out. The dude played Yu-Gi-Oh, but was homeless. This man smelled worse than anyone I've ever met before or since because he legit never showered. We'll call him No Home. Anyways, one of the other dudes in our group was a student at the local university. Let's call him Meanswell. Meanswell took pity on No Home and decided to let him live at his dorm temporarily. I guess he figured No Home just needed a leg up and would be inspired to get his, li get his ish together. As you may know, students are absolutely not allowed to let other people live on campus, so Meanswell really stuck his neck out for the guy, and all No Home had to do was not be a nuisance and draw attention to himself. No Home's sole source of income was always, has always been stealing Yu-Gi-Oh cards from Walmart and trading them to us for food. I once got an ulti plague spreader zombie for a Whopper Jr. Predictably, No Home ended up robbing Meanswell, shocker, smoking weed in his dorm, and even caused an ant infestation in the dorms by being such a massive slob. But most importantly to the story, No Home decided to invite three other dudes and this one girl over, and they all ran a train on her in, the meanwhile, in Meanwell's bed. Let's call the girl Train Tracks, and one of the three dudes we'll call Wife Beater. Neither of them were Yu-Gi-Oh affiliated. Long story short, No Home caused such a nuisance that Meanswell got busted for letting him live there and for possession of marijuana. No Home got kicked out and just went back to sleeping at Waffle House, but Meanswell lost a couple scholarships and had to do community service for like a year. Fast forward a bit and it turns out that Train Tracks got pregnant. Nobody knows who the dad is, but No Home is convinced it's him. I don't know why he thought his swimmers were any less dead in the water than he was, but I digress. Train Tracks decided that Wife Beater is the real dad and tells No Home to piss off. Mind you, there was never a paternity test at any point in this story, so she obviously just didn't want the broke bum to be the dad. She shacks up with Wife Beater, and true to his name, he beats her on the regular. Every time she got her ass beat, she'd go crying to No Home because nobody else gave a damn about her, but then she'd go right back to Wife Beater. Over and over this happened, and yes, she was pregnant when the dude was beating her. Anyways, fast forward a bit, and No Home has found another sucker, I mean nice person, to live with. Let's call him Too Nice. So, Too Nice is a Yu-Gi-Oh player, and he lets No Home live at his house, and the same ish happens. No Home robs him multiple times and doesn't pay rent, even though he actually had a real job at the time. So, anyways, I guess the girl caught one too many ass whoopings because she finally left Wife Beater and No Home starts trying to holler at her again. She still wants him to piss off, so one day, when she's at work, he walks over to her house, breaks in, steals every bit of cash she has, and takes the damn baby, too! No Home proceeds to walk back to Too Nice's house, drops off the baby, I don't remember if Too Nice was even there or not, and con then comes up to the local Burger King. Soon as Train Tracks gets home, she's, she sees the baby and her rent money are gone. She calls the cops to report the kidnapping and tells them that she knows exactly who did it and where he hangs out. So No Home and some other Yu-Gi-Oh players are hanging out at Burger King and the cops show up to arrest him for kidnapping. They're leading him out of the store in handcuffs and all the Yu-Gi-Oh players are just sitting there like surprise Pikachu.png? The story has a funny ending. A while later, the girl decides to just hook up with No Home. I'm sure she finally realized that she had literally no other options. At last, No Home has it all. The girl of his dreams, his kid, and a new lease on life. They decide that they're going to move to Atlanta in violation of No Home's parole for a litany of charges, including the kidnapping one. And so they ended their lease, packed up their car, and headed up to the big city for a fresh start. They rented a hotel room, and the next day, No Home starts driving around looking for jobs while Train Track stays in the hotel with the kid. Now, obviously, no one wants to hire a guy with a laundry list of criminal charges that includes kidnapping, so No Home is getting denied on the spot wherever he turns in an application. After a couple hours of this, he decides it's too hard, so he gives up, drives back to our city, leaving train tracks and the baby up in Atlanta in an unpaid hotel room with no car and no money. 
Needless to say, she broke up with him, and I haven't heard any of them since. As far as I know, No Home doesn't even live here anymore. I think he moved out to Texas. So if you live there, y'all better beware. He's your problem now. Also, I might have forgotten a detail or two, got a thing mixed up here or there, since I'm not the official keeper of the No Home Chronicles, but this is just a general summary of what happened. This was an absolutely crazy story. While I can commend our protagonists for trying to help a stranger down on their luck, the story sadly goes to show that the old adage of no good deed goes unpunished still proves true. If you enjoyed this story, please drop this video a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video.